You're listening to EFT Radio Online, where we explore meridian tapping techniques for self-help and peak performance. By listening to this audio, you agree to the disclaimer located at eftradioonline.com forward slash disclaimer. If you'd like to get the schedule of all the upcoming EFT radio shows and access to archive shows, please visit us at eftradioonline.com where you can subscribe to our free newsletter. Are you a savvy, successful single looking to manifest your soulmate? Are you stuck repeating the same kind of unsatisfactory relationship over and over? What if you could stop struggling to find love and just be love so that your soulmate comes to you? Welcome to Manifest Your Soulmate with EFT, where you'll discover how to unleash the power of your mind to attract the love of your life. Your host is Dr. Annette Valancourt, author, master manifester, and the elite soulmate coach. Hi, I'm Dr. Annette Valancourt, and welcome to Manifest Your Soulmate with EFT. I'm really excited about today because we have a guest and we're going to do an actual tapping session from start to finish. I want to dive right into it, but first I um, want to say a few things about this session. We're, this is where we're going to put all the pieces together and actually do some tapping. And when we get to that point of the tapping, I want to invite all of you to get out your tapping charts and to tap along with us. You'll be able to borrow benefits, as Gary Craig calls it. In other words, you'll be able to tap on yourself, saying the statements that we're using, but you will get benefits for your particular issues. It's a really powerful way of using tapping. I also want to invite you to go to my website at www.manifestyoursoulmatewitheft.com and click on the link for videos. I have a series of videos called Tapping Along with Annette, where you can also borrow benefits and learn how to tap. The format of our show today is going to be getting a little bit of a history with our guest, Megan, and out of that history, developing tapping statements that are based on her current difficulties in taking action towards manifesting her soulmate. As we develop a variety of different possible tapping statements, we're going to look for one that has the most emotional intensity or juice to it. As I always say, there's no point in tapping on something if it isn't currently bothering you. It doesn't have any emotional intensity in the moment. And then we'll let her to decide which one of those statements has the highest priorities or has the highest priority for her. I'll do a quick review of how to tap and also be teaching tapping in the middle of our tapping session. So it's both a demonstration and a teaching show. I asked Megan before the show to go to my website and download the Soulmate Readiness Assessment and take that so that she could begin to narrow down some of the areas within her journey that she's having particular trouble with, and you can do the same thing. Again, it's called the Soulmate Readiness Assessment. It's a paper and pencil test that you can give yourself to help you determine where in the seven stages of manifesting you might be stuck. Finally, before I bring on my guest, I just want to mention that this is an example of how we might work together if you wanted a sample coaching session. I call it my Tapping Into Love coaching program. You know, it's, it's fun to tap along with on somebody else's issues, but think about how much more effective it would be to work directly with me to ferret out what your blocks, your fears, your blocking beliefs, your limitations are, or where you're stuck, and tap those away in a sample session. It's a 30-minute session, and it's available Um, at a discount price up until I think it's August the 31st, then it goes back to the regular price. So I want to invite you also to visit my website and take advantage of that when you, uh, after you complete the soulmate readiness assessment. One of the things you'll notice in this tapping is that 
you'll hear me throw in a lot of different ways of using the reminder phrase. I've been doing EFT tapping since 2006, and I throw in a variety of their techniques. I don't just do the standard technique. So if you're a little confused by that, that's what that's what's going on. So I want to welcome our guest, Megan. Get out your EFT tapping points chart and get ready to tap along with us. Here's what readers are saying about how to manifest your soulmate with EFT by Dr. Annette Valencourt, the elite soulmate coach. This amazingly powerful book speaks to the soul. Annette is relatable and really gets it on a level that is so reassuring and hopeful. She describes the tapping process better than any I've seen. The menus woven throughout the book are sheer genius, offering a customizable process that is sure to uncover and release any block holding you back. There's so much gold in this book, it goes way beyond manifesting your soulmate. It gives the reader the tools to manifest whatever it is they truly desire in their life. Marcy Trailer, Professional Empowerment Coach. Now available on Amazon.com or at EliteSoulmateCoaching.com. I also wanted to announce that for a limited time only, you can get a free PDF of my entire book, How to Manifest Your Soulmate with EFT, Relationship as a Spiritual Path. This is my gift to you for signing up to The Love Nest, my email newsletter, in which you will receive regular soulmate success tips. All you have to do to get your instant access to this book is go to my website, EliteSoulmateCoaching.com, and enter your email, and you will get instant access to the entire book. Hey, I want to welcome my guest, Megan. She's a student of EFT and has some experience with it and also some questions about the soulmate journey and where she's stuck. So I want to welcome her to the show. And Megan, before we get started, I want to ask your permission for us to discuss what might be some personal stuff on the show. Do, do we have your permission to do that? Sure. Okay. Um, welcome to the show, first of all, and thank you so much for volunteering to help out with this demonstration. Today's Thank show, you, Annette. Today's show is Are You Ready to Manifest Your Soulmate? I think you said earlier when we talked that you had a chance to go to use the soulmate readiness assessment. So first of all, I just kind of wanted your, your input and feedback about that. Well, I thought it was very thorough. I thought it asked a lot of uh, meaningful questions. I will say that a few of the questions were kind of like, well, it depends on the day. You know, um, one of them said, um, you know, I'm patient and trust that my soulmate will appear at the perfect time in the perfect way. And I didn't score very high on that today. Um, <laughs> so it is, I think that it is also open to uh, to influences of, of how you feel on any, any particular given day in this journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that to me that suggests that that that's not a solid belief, that that's not one that you're consistently confident about, and that may need a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's maybe how you could how you could say it. It did bring up a couple of um, limiting beliefs that I I know that would be good for me to clear. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, that was, that was my intention, to really kind of go through the seven stages of manifesting and try to capture where within each of those steps you might be stuck, and very specifically where you might be stuck on, on, by each item. So, well, tell us a little bit, Megan, where you're at in your soulmate journey, and for the listening audience as well, you might stop and reflect as well as you're listening to Megan's story. Well, I haven't, unfortunately, I hate to admit this, I haven't been in a relationship for 10 years. I kind of woke up at the beginning of this year and went, wow, it's been that long. And it's not that I haven't been out on dates. It's not that I haven't met men. I just, I seem to either attract men that I'm not very interested in or I am attracted to men who are not very interested in me. 
that seems to be my pattern. Both of those things are the pattern that I the, that I obviously want to clear. Okay. And I, and again, sometimes it depends upon the day because I do think that sometimes you just have these moments when you're like, uh, I don't even want to. You know, <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> I, think I don't even want to do the work. It's too much. I'm tired. But um, you know, I I am at a place that is more uh, where things are more possible now. I, I do honestly feel and at like I'm I'm at the I'm at the wall ready to be pushed or jump over it. But there's there's just like my nose, the wall is in front of my nose and I can see over it. The rest of my body has got to get over, if you will. <laughs> right, right. So it, it's kind of like raring to go, but you, but there's this wall that you can't get over and you need some assistance, either get pushed over it or something that allows you your energy, energy to jump over it. Yeah. I'm still trying to, you know, my prayer is always, please remove whatever blocks. And so I'm still trying to figure out what those what those blocks are where is it that i'm where is it that i'm preventing myself what beliefs are are do i have that are preventing me drawing things towards me you know here's a for instance i um in my in my professional life it's very easy for me to manifest things and in other areas of my personal life it's very easy for me to manifest things so I don't doubt my ability to manifest except in the area of a soulmate. And, you know, uh, Megan, I think so many people listening to this show can relate to that, that we are all manifesting all the time. We're just not consciously manifesting or we're, we're manifesting really well in one area of our lives, like our professional lives, and not so much, you know, in yeah. our love life. So, so I'm glad you're bringing that up. Well, you mentioned a couple of things that you found from the soulmate readiness assessment, some blocking beliefs. Do you care to share those with us so that we can get an idea of how to use those and maybe how to um, create some tapping statements for those? Yeah. um, The patience that I mentioned before, I'm patient and trust that my soulmate will appear in perfect time in a perfect way. I am able to step outside my comfort zone to explore new possibilities. That was a little bit our... Uh, more on the low end of the scale. Uh, And the other two, which I kind of laughed at myself, I am excited and optimistic about meeting my soulmate, and I believe there is someone out there with whom to share my life. Again, those were ones where I kind of said, yeah, well, it depends on the day. You know, if you had (laughs) asked me, if you had asked me a month ago, that would have been seven on the scale, and today it was about a 4.5. And you also mentioned to me, Megan, when you were talking about the show the other day, that you recently hit an unexpected bump in the road. Do, do you care to share anything about that? And Yeah. Um, so there's a guy that I work with, and he's, he's a really great guy. He's a great father. He's a single dad. Um, he's been divorced for a couple of years now. And right about the time his divorce was getting finalized, we, um, we went out. We went out twice. And I really liked him, and he was the first guy in a long time that I really, really liked. I have just an incredible amount of respect for him as far as how he raises his son, how he's fought for his son and and other things, and and we we definitely have a physical attraction. And um, he didn't, you know, after the second date, he didn't really respond, and so I was forced to just let it go and then once in a while he would kind of be very flirtatious with me and so sometime last year I decided you know what let it be okay that he's not ready to be in a relationship let that just be okay and enjoy the flirtation just let it be a way to just practice flirting there's nothing wrong with that so um a couple months ago, we started talking more and more, and we finally got together and went out to lunch, and we had just a great time. And uh, he had he had gone on vacation shortly before this time that we went to lunch, and I was asking him, so you drove down to Florida by yourself? Yes, what did you do? Blah, 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 blah. 
But there was something that wasn't right. And so I asked somebody else on his team, I said, does he have a girlfriend? And she said, yeah. Uh, I said, oh, really? And he, she said, yeah. He went to Florida with her last year with their kids. And he said, when I asked him who he was going to Florida with this year, he said, you know, the same person as last year, only this time we're going by our, ourselves. Mm-hmm. And yet he swore to me that he drove down to Florida by himself. Now, mm-hmm. I, I don't know why he lied to me. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time that I found out uh, that he lied, I was going to New York on vacation. And so I didn't really think about it. But when I came back, I noticed that it really kind of bothered me. And so where the limiting belief was that I figured out is that I made it, I made it mean something about me uh, instead of what it really is, which is, you know, he made a decision for whatever reason mm-hmm. to lie to me. Mm-hmm. So what did you make it mean about you? That I am attracted to men who aren't really that interested in me. Uh. And that, and that, and because of that, you know, I'll never meet anyone. Mm-hmm. It always makes it. It always means something that has to do with I'll never meet anyone. <laughs> um, him lying equals he's really not interested in me, which equals there must be something wrong, which equals I will never meet anyone. Right, and I'll die alone on the streets. Right. So one of the things I want to point out from what you just described and the audience too that you can think about is you mentioned at least four ways that you can identify uh, where you're lost or the unexpected bump in the road. One is to take like the soulmate readiness assessment and identify something from there. Another one is to just look at your current dating situation and describe what's coming up. You know, that you met somebody that you're attracted to and turns out he lied to you. Another way to find out something that may be out of your awareness is when you get sort of smacked between the eyes with a strong feeling of upset. And then you can take some time and either tap on it or trace it back to, well, what, do I, what am I making this mean? Usually, like you said, Megan, when you make it mean something about us, our worthiness, our attractiveness, our, our goodness, our whatever. So when you can trace that back to what you make it to mean, then you can come up with a way to, to tap on that. And then the fourth one, which I didn't even think of, and I'm glad you mentioned it, is observing changes in your, your behavior, like eating too much or drinking too much or sleeping too much or throwing yourself into work and just, just trying to distract yourself from some level of upset. So for the listening audience, when you're thinking about where you might be in your soulmate journey, those are four different ways that you can go uh, explore a little bit to, to see what might be might be fruitful for you, that you might uncover some fears or some beliefs or some past history that's in the way of you moving on into the next step in your soulmate journey. So Megan, let's spend a little time talking about how to turn each one of these limiting beliefs or these situations into a statement that you could tap on. Let's start out with the, the one about patience and trust that your soulmate will come in the right time in the right, the right way. Now, for the audience, I'm, I'm assuming that some of you are really familiar and experienced with EFT, and others listening may be brand new to the program uh, and to EFT. So, the format for a tapping statement, or as Gary Craig calls it, a setup statement, is even though I have this problem, and you describe the problem, very specific to your life. Uh, The more specific, the better. It turns out that your tapping statement is more effective, the more behavioral, the more specific, and the more in present time you can can experience the upset uh, than general statement. And then the second half of of the tapping statement is um, the default that I like to use is I deeply love and accept myself. So to review, even though I have this problem, I deeply love and accept myself. And a point that I want to make here is that some people who are used to doing affirmations to try to manifest their soulmate 
might get a little alarmed at hearing hearing us talk about negative things. And I'll say, oh my God, I don't want to tap on that. That's negative. I'm afraid I'm going to tap it in there. Well, I like to say, honey, it's already there. <laughs> what we're doing with the tapping statement is we're aiming at the problem. We're aiming at the specific problem so that we can use the tapping to uproot it and remove it and throw it away. And then also, um, if we'll get a chance to do that in later programs, show how to also install affirmative and positive beliefs with the tapping. So Megan, let's go back to your statement about patience and trust. My soulmate will show up at the perfect time in the perfect way. How could we turn that into a tapping statement? You want to start? Um, I just even by saying I trust that my soulmate will appear in the perfect time in the perfect way. Mm -hmm. Now, I, when you say that, I hear your voice is kind of flat. So I'm really going to look for some intensity for that because, again, one of the things that makes EFT so powerful is that when you create a tapping statement that brings some juice to it, that it brings some emotional intensity to it, then you know you got the bull by the horn. So let's see if we can word that, add some feeling words to that. Say what, what you were going to use again. So that so the one that I was having trouble with that I scored a two on is I am patient and trust that my soulmate will appear in a perfect time in a perfect way. Right. Yeah, we're looking to turn that into a tappable statement that has some emotional intensity to it. So it might be something like, even though I am the most impatient person right now, and I just don't trust or believe that my soulmate will ever show up, I need to accept myself. Okay. The thing that I've been thinking about recently is I give up. Mm. I just give up. Yeah. I'm so tired of fighting for this. Okay. So now I hear emotion in your voice. Yeah. So perhaps a good tapping statement might be, even though I am so tired of fighting for this and I just want to give up. I deeply love and accept myself. How does that sit with you? Yeah, that's good. Okay. And if we had to give it an intensity level on a scale of 0 to 10, when you say that to yourself right now, even though I'm so tired of fighting for this and I just want to give up, how intense is that for you? It's about an 8 to a 9. Okay. So there's, some, there's a lot of juice in that one. Yeah. Okay. Now, bear with me for a second, because for the sake of demonstration, I'd like to do a couple of these. So just launch right into tapping on this first one, um, just to give an example of, again, doing, creating some tapping statements. So another one that you said was problematic for you was um, being able to step outside of your comfort zone. I'm able to step outside of my comfort zone and explore new possibilities. Okay, so what would be the problem within that statement? In other words, as we're making the tapping statement, even though I, what, have difficulty, I'm afraid of, I'm reluctant to, I'm ambivalent about, stepping outside of um, Even though I hate stepping outside of my com oh. comfort zone, I'm willing to do it. There you go. Even though I hate... See, See the importance of getting that feeling word in there? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. How intense is that for you when you say it in this moment? Probably about a seven. Okay. And I like, too, that you added on your own version of the, the second half of the tapping statement, which is I'm willing to do it. There's a lot of flexibility that you can build into these tapping statements. They don't all have to be by the book. In fact, uh, when people work with me, you'll notice that I'll, I'll throw in everything in the kitchen sink that I know in terms of how to work with the tapping statements, doing a little NLP reframing and those sorts of things to really make them effective and, and also use my intuition on this. Okay, let's just do one more on this. And you get the tip. Uh, now, now, do you want to go and this one in a different direction because one of the positive things about this situation with the sky 
is that I like, I, I want to attach another face to him. <laughs> and to attach another face to him. So in other words, the, the comfort level, the feeling, the, the friendship that was being cultivated, the attraction, all of those things are good things that I mm-hmm. want to use to manifest a guy who really likes me. Mm-hmm. And obviously has a little bit more integrity. Say something like, even though this particular guy didn't work out, I love the friendship that we were building. I love the attraction that we were having. And I so look forward to meeting the man that will bring me all of it. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Good, good, good. And just for, just for the sake of this, this one that you mentioned that's so chronic for you, which is that belief that you'll never meet anybody. Um, I'm sure there's lots of people in the listening audience who can relate to that as well. And since it's, it's the kind of, it sounds like it's the bottom line for you that when you get into some of these, these stuck places or get disappointed by other people, that that's, that's the bottom line you go to. Yeah. Let's think about how we might turn that I'll never meet anyone. Is that a fear? Is that despair? Is that frustration? Is that absolute certainty? What's the feeling that goes with that? Well, again, depending on the day, today it feels like uh, absolute certainty. But I will say that, that it also ties into the statement that we just wrote about the relationship with this guy. Uh-huh. So even though he's not available to me, all of that fun, all of those feelings, all of those attractions will come when I meet the person I'm whatever yeah. I'm supposed to meet. Somebody's going to be wildly interested in you and follow you around and hang on every word that you say and all that good stuff. Yes, but not in a creepy stalkerish way. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We don't want to tap that in. All right. So we spent a little time talking about where you are on the soulmate journey, some of the bumps that you hit in the road, uh, different ways that you can determine how you're lost and in, in, in what direction perhaps to take. And now we're, we've just developed a, a bunch of tapping statements. Hopefully the, the audience can do the same or is kind of working along with it. I mean, if you're listening along and have written down some statements for yourself and some intensity levels for each of them, then now is the time to pull out your tapping sheet uh, with the chart of the tapping points on it because we're going to uh, do some tapping on this. And hopefully I'll remember, Megan, to remind me some if you get lost to announce the tapping points out loud. Um, okay. And while, while I'm doing a real quick instruction on the tapping you can be looking at the tapping statements that we just developed and, and pick the one that you want to work on. So real quickly for the listening audience, if, you, if you're new to tapping, um, hopefully you'll go to the link on the, on the website to download the tapping chart or you can get it from my, from my website. But to review quickly, there are two places you can start with the tapping. One is either on the fleshy side outside of the hand. It's called a karate chop point. It's if you were going to break a board in karate. And you take two fingers from the other hand and tap on the outside part of the hand. And um, don't tap hard. You don't need to bruise yourself. And we'll start there. Another option is called the tender spot. And it's kind of up near your shoulder, underneath your collarbone. And as you kind of fish around there, rub around there, you'll notice that there's it doesn't necessarily hurt, but you notice that it's kind of tender. And if you use that as your starting place, then you, you rub that as you're repeating your setup phrase. You don't tap on that. I've seen some people tap on that. It's like, no, that's really not how Gary Craig teaches it. Uh, you're supposed to rub on that. But I, I kind of prefer to start off with the, with the karate chop point, and then sometimes if I'm not getting movement, I'll switch to the, to the tender spot. The next point is the top of the head, and these are in no particular order. I just like 
start at the top of the body and kind of work down on the points around the hands and the face. And I bunch my fingers together and, and tap on the crown of my head, again, not very hard, on that spot that mm, my, I remember my mother used to say, don't push there on the baby. <laughs> there's, a, there's a tender spot on the top of your head and that's the top of the head point. Then we move to the inside of the eyebrow point, taking two fingers, tap near the bridge of the nose, but using the end of the eyebrow as a guide. Then we go to the outside of the eyebrow, again using the end of the eyebrow as a guide, tapping on the bony structure around your eye. The under the eye point is, again, on the bony part of your eye, directly below your pupil. And by the way, when we're tapping on these points, we're tapping at least seven times. I don't know why seven, but it seems to be the magic number. You can tap more. I wouldn't tap less. Uh, sometimes I notice when I'm working with people or working with myself that I want to tap more on that spot. Uh, I don't know why, it's just kind of an intuitive feeling like something's about to shift. The next point is under the nose, all the nose point, but it's actually under the nose, and that little dimple section right between your lip, your upper lip, and your nose. And the next one is called the chin point. Again, you're tapping gently with two fingers. It's kind of in the crease in your chin, that little, little, little indentation in your chin. The next one is called the collarbone point, which is a, a little confusing for people. But the easiest way I have found to tap on the collarbone point is to go down to the base of your neck, and you'll notice that there's a, a bony part there at the bottom of your throat, and there's kind of this U-shaped bone, and it's got little knobs on either side of it. And you can tap either on, on those knobs or, or just about an inch into those, or an easier way is to make a fist and tap right in the center, and that way you're ending up tapping on both sides of the, of the collarbone point at the same time. And then the last one we're going to use for the purpose of this is, is the un, under the arm point, and as you, this is what I call the chimpanzee movement where you raise one arm up and you reach under with the opposite arm and you tap about a hand's width or four inches below the top of your armpit. For us girls, I usually say it's in the middle of your bra strap and everybody knows where that's at. So those are the main points for the shorthand version of the EFT. There's additional points. There's a nine gamut uh, procedure that you can use. But, you know, Gary's not using that much anymore, and I don't find that it's necessary to use unless we're particularly stuck. So for the sake of our demonstration, those are the points that we're going to use. So that was kind of a short introduction to EFT, and I want to go back now to you, Megan, and see which tapping statement you would like to work on today and do some tapping about. Um, let's work on even though this guy isn't interested in me, the comfort, friendship, and attraction we have comes to me in a man who wants me. Okay. Some form of that. Okay. Um, that's about a five, but the rest of the statement is, uh, is, is one that I don't really, that I'm struggling with. Okay. Talk to me about that. You may want to end up with this, but start with, I'll never meet a man who wants me. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the negative belief. Okay. So you want to start out with the negative, even though I'm, I'm absolutely certain that I'll never meet anyone who's interested in me as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's give that a try. So let's go to the karate chop point and repeat aloud after me and say it like you mean it. Even though I'm absolutely certain even though I'm absolutely certain that I'll never meet anybody who's interested in me. That I'll never meet anybody who's interested in me. I deeply love and accept myself. I deeply love and accept myself. Even though I'm absolutely certain. Even though I'm absolutely certain. Based on my past history. Based on my past history. And this recent episode. And this recent episode. That I'll never meet anybody who's interested in me that I'll never meet anyone who's interested in me. I deeply love and accept myself. I deeply love and accept myself. And I'm open to the possibility 
and I'm open to the possibility that I can have all these yummy feelings, that I can have all these wonderful feelings with um, my soulmate in the future. With my soulmate in the future. Okay, one more time. Even though I'm absolutely certain, even though I'm absolutely certain that I'll never meet anybody, that I'll never meet anybody who's interested in me, interested in me, and I'll only meet guys who are unavailable, and I'll only meet guys who are unavailable, or who lie to me, or who lie to me, I deeply love and accept myself. I deeply love and accept myself. Okay. Now, put your fingers together at the top of the head, back there. I'll never meet anybody who's interested in me. I'll never meet anybody who's interested in me. Inside the eyebrow point, I'm absolutely certain of this. I'm absolutely certain of this. Outside the eyebrow, I'm absolutely certain of this. I'm absolutely certain of this. Under the eye. This causes me great despair. This causes me great despair. Under the nose and frustration. And frustration. Chin point. Of course, it depends on the day of the week. Of course, it depends on the day of the week. Collarbone point. So my, my feelings fluctuate. My feelings fluctuate. Under the arm. No, I'm absolutely certain of this. But I'm absolutely certain of this. Back to, now we're going to go back to the top of the head and continue to tap. Do you want to weave in some stuff about this guy? Sure. The tap okay. So even though I met this great guy at work, even though I met this great guy at work, and it seems like things were going okay, and it seemed like things were going okay, and I was okay whether I talked to him or not, and I was okay whether I talked to him or not, and I was so upset, and I was so upset, because it made me think I'll never meet anybody. Because it made me think I'll never meet anybody. Inside the eyebrow. I'm so frustrated about this guy at work. I'm so frustrated about this guy at work. Outside the eyebrow. I want somebody just like him. I want somebody just like him. Except who's interested in me. Except he's in, who's interested in me. Under the eye. I can't imagine having somebody who's wildly interested in me can't imagine having someone who's wildly interested in me. Under the nose. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Ten point. No, I can't. No, I can't. Collarbone point. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Under the arm. I can't imagine how that's going to feel. I can't imagine how that's going to feel. Back up to the top of the head. But I know it's going to be wonderful. I know it's going to be wonderful. Inside the eyebrow point. I'm ready for this. I am ready for this. Outside the eyebrow point. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Under the eye. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Under the nose. No, nobody's going to be interested in me. No, no one's going to be interested in me. Boy, I've got a limiting belief here. Boy, I have a limiting belief here. Collarbone point. I've been telling myself this for a long time. I've been telling myself this for a long time. Under the arm. And that's what shows up in my life. And that's what shows up in my life. Top of the head. So maybe I need to change what I believe. Maybe I need to change what I believe. Inside the eyebrow. And have something different show up. And have something different show up. Outside the eyebrow. How am I going to let go of this thought? How am I going to let go of this thought? Outside the eyebrow. How am I going to let go of this thought? How am I going to let go of this thought? Under the eye. I've been thinking it for so long. I've been thinking of it for so long. Under the nose. And I've got evidence for it everywhere. And I have evidence for it everywhere. Ten point. I don't think I can change my mind about this. I don't think I can change my mind about this. Collarbone point. But what if I could? But what if I could? Under the arm. What if I could change it to something else? What if I can change it to something else? Top of the head. I think I'd like that. I think I'd like that. Inside the eyebrow point. Yeah, I really, really would like that. I really would like that. Outside the eyebrow. Yeah, I'm sick of thinking this. 
I'm sick of thinking under the eye. It's certainly not flattering to me. It, it's clearly not flattering to me. Under the nose. And I'm a really interesting person. And I'm a really interesting person. In point. I'm a really interesting person. I'm a really interesting person. Collarbone point. I'm really interested in myself. I'm really interested in myself. Under the arm. And I don't understand why others aren't. And I don't understand why others aren't. Top of the head. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, Inside the eyebrow. No, I don't. No, I don't. Outside the eyebrow. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Under the eye. It's something about them. It's something about them. I don't know. I guess I don't appeal to everybody. I guess I don't appeal to everybody. In point, and that's okay with me. That's okay with me. Collarbone point. Because everybody doesn't appeal to me. Because everybody doesn't appeal to me. Under the arm. I don't find everybody interesting. I don't find everybody interesting. Inside the eyebrow. But I'm really interesting. But I'm really interesting. Outside the eyebrow. And I want them to be interested in me. And I want them to be interested in me. Under the eye. I want them to choose me. I want them to choose me. Under the nose. I want them to love me. I want them to love me. Chin point. Because I love me. Because I love me. Collarbone point. And I know I'm really interesting. And I know I'm really interesting. And under the arm. And I know I'll be really interesting to my soulmate. And I know I'll be really interesting to my soulmate. Okay, let's stop there and take a breath. I can't see whether or not you're yawning or sighing, which is a sigh. My visual <sighs> sign that things are shifting. Um, we started out at a five or so on that one. Where are you now? Well, I was, I was at about a ten of I'll never meet my soulmate. Where is it now? With that one, I'm probably at about a six. Six, okay. okay. And what did you notice, Megan, as we were tapping? Uh, in terms of other thoughts or ideas, or not much, just not much came to me except for relaxation. I'm more relaxed than when we started. Mm-hmm. I was very kind of, I was very in tune with trying to be very in tune with whatever you said. So there wasn't, there wasn't anything that popped into my head specifically. Yeah, and I will say, as far as like the situation with him. That went from about a five down to about a, a two, probably. So that okay. that also that also moved. So we kind of um, we kind of shifted a couple of things in one tapping session, which is great. Okay, okay cool. All right, now uh, since we have time to do this, um, I'm not satisfied with you being at a six at all, uh, with the belief that you're never going to have anybody. So this is what we do: is we go back to the karate chop point. And we alter our capping statements just a little bit like this. So are you ready for that? I'm ready. Okay. Tapping on the karate chop point. Uh, even though I still, ha- I still somewhat believe. Even though I still somewhat believe. That I'll never meet anybody. That I'll never meet anybody. Anybody who wants me, that is. Anybody who wants me, that is. I deeply love and accept myself. I deeply love and accept myself. And I want myself. I want myself. Even though I believe I'll never meet anybody who wants me. Even though I believe I'll never meet anybody who wants me. And they're all rejecting of me. And they're all rejecting of me. And maybe I reject myself a little bit. Maybe I reject myself a little bit. And that's what is being mirrored to me. And that's what's being mirrored to me. I deeply love and accept myself anyhow. I deeply love and accept myself anyhow. Okay, one more time. Even though I believe I'll never meet anybody who wants me. Even though I believe I'll never meet anybody who wants me. And I'm so tired of all this rejection. And I'm so tired of all this rejection. And I'm going to be vigilant of how I reject myself. And I'm going to be vigilant of how I reject myself. Because I don't need to see that out in the world anymore. I don't need to see that in the world anymore. 
I deeply love and accept my rejecting self anyhow. I deeply love and accept my rejecting self anyhow. And I forgive myself for that. And I forgive myself for that. Okay, let's go to the top of the head. I still doubt that I'm going to meet somebody who wants me. I still doubt that I'm going to meet somebody who who wants me. Inside the eyebrow point, this remaining doubt and frustration. This remaining doubt and frustration. Outside the eyebrow point, remaining doubt and frustration. Remaining doubt and frustration. Under the eye, I'm so sick of all this rejection. I'm still sick of all this rejection. Under the nose, so sick of this rejection. So sick of this rejection. On chin point, even though I know it's not personal. Even though I know it's not personal. It feels personal. It feels personal. Collarbone point, even though I know it's not personal. Even though I know it's not personal. It feels personal. It feels personal. Under the arm. And it makes me think I'll never find anybody. And it makes me think I'll never find anybody. Top of the head. Even though I might somehow be rejecting of myself. Even though I might be somehow rejecting of myself. Inside the eyebrow. Or not interested in the other person. Or not interested in the other person. I deeply love and accept myself. I deeply love and accept myself. Outside the eyebrow point. Even though I'm not as interested in myself. Even though I'm not as interested in myself. As I think I am. As I think I am. Under the eye, I could do better. I could do better. Under the nose. And then I'll see what manifests. And then I'll see what manifests. Chin point. Maybe these, these relationships are all mirrors. Maybe these relationships are all mirrors. Collarbone point about my own lack of interest and rejection of myself. About my own lack of interest and rejection of myself. Under the air, my own lack of interest and rejection of myself. My own lack of interest and rejection of myself. Top of the head. No, that can't be true. No, that can't be true. Inside the eyebrow. But what if it is? But what if it is? Outside the eyebrow. No, that can't be true. No, that can't be true. Under the eye. But then why is it all manifesting? But then why is it all manifesting? Under the nose. I think I'm starting to get the message. I think I'm starting to get the message. Chin point. What if I get the message? What if I do get the message? And once I get the message? And once I get the message? Collarbone point. Watch everything change outside of me. Watch everything change outside of me. Under the arm. What I believe within. What I believe within. Manifests without. Manifests without. Top of the head. What I'm saying is theirs. What I'm saying is theirs. Yep. Inside the eyebrow is really mine. Is really mine. Outside the eyebrow. I can learn to show more interest and acceptance of myself. I can learn to show more interest and acceptance of myself. Under the eye. More interest and acceptance of myself. More interest and acceptance of myself. More, under the nose. More interest and acceptance of myself. More interest and acceptance of myself. Chin point. Bye-bye. Goodbye, rejection. I like to do bye-bye. Bye-bye, rejection. Yeah, bye-bye, rejection. Collarbone point. Bye-bye, self-rejection. Bye-bye, self-rejection. Under the arm. Hello, self-acceptance. Hello, self-acceptance. Top of the head. Hello, self-acceptance. Hello, self-acceptance. Inside the eyebrow. Hello, self-acceptance. Hello, self-acceptance. Outside the eyebrow. Bye-bye, rejection. Bye-bye, rejection. Under the eye. Hello, self-acceptance. Hello, self-acceptance. Under the nose. Gee, I'm getting more interesting as we speak. Gee, I'm getting more interesting as we speak. (laughs) Chin point. Uh, Gee, I'm getting more interesting as we speak. Gee, I'm getting more interesting as we speak. Collarbone point. There's lots about me that I can explore. There's a lot about me that I can explore. Under the arm. And there's lots about me I can love. And there's lots about me that I can love. Okay, let's take a deep breath. 
and let it go and tell me what you're noticing now in terms of intensity and feelings in your body or thoughts in your mind? Um, so on the, I'll never beat anyone who interested in me scale. Well, it's not completely gone, but it's down about a point or two. Okay. And, so. and getting it down to that level at least opens the door for me to want to do something. Ah. Right? Because when, when it's at a 10 and you think, well, I'm ne- it's just never going to happen, then you, the next thing out of your mouth is, well, why bother? Right. Right. So getting it down to the, to the four or five range at least opens a window. Okay. Okay, cool. And yeah, on the, so that's great. Yeah, has anything changed um, on the other part about the guy at work? Uh, yeah, he's down to about a, I don't know, a nano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really care. I still, I still would like to know why he lied to me, but whatever. Yeah, it's, it, it doesn't sound like it's as burning of a, of a question now as it might have been a few days ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So tell me a little bit more about now that you're at a four or five with the this belief or the certainty that you had before of I'll never meet anybody who wants me. Tell me about what you said you can now imagine yourself taking some action. And I wanted to do this this idea of just a, kind of setting this goal for myself of six meetings in six weeks to just to do it. <laughs> yeah. For no other reason. And so, as we said earlier, when when this happened with this guy at work, I just kind of went into this bit of this funk. And it brought up all the old stuff. Mm-hmm. I want to thank you for...